Warning, this video contains sensitive imagery containing Nazi symbology that may offend some viewers, and mildly unpleasant humor. Viewer discretion is advised. You know, considering we're faking, you know, being Nazis and we're literally sailing like right in front of them, do, do you think they'll notice us not being, you know, like actual Germans? No, 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 no. We'll be fine. Don't worry. We'll be fine. <laughs> Um, do, do you think they've noticed? Do you? No, 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 no. I, I think we're pretty, pretty well hidden. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think they've noticed. I don't, I don't think so at all. Operation Chariot was a British plan formulated by Winston Churchill and Viscount Mountbatten in 1942 following the completion and presentation of the Kriegsmarine's Tirpitz. The Tirpitz was one of two Bismarcks that the Germans had. It was a big, sexy warship that made the British a wee bit uncomfortable and could change the course of the war. So, Churchill had decided to employ some ideas from Hitler. He would create a special division to emulate something of the sort of the Schutzstaffel. Because Germany had employed special divisions of soldiers made for guerrilla warfare and the advancement of the occupation of countries like France while the rest of the Wehrmacht lagged behind, Churchill had decided to do the same. This was the beginning of what would forever be known as the British Commandos. Commandos were an elite company of British troops separate from the Army, Royal Marines, and the RAF. They were to be the best of the best. These young men were hired primarily for their intellect and underwent grueling training that hadn't ever been seen before. In fact, a lot of the training methods used by the commandos made at this time are still used today by the world's most elite military divisions. So, let's see what it's like. Boys, cue the training montage. to tackle a bloke with your bare hands. Knock him out, spoil his prospects and pinch his weapon. And his gold watch too if he's got one. Okay, maybe the training was a little less advanced than we think. But apart from that, they had a master plan. A stroke of genius. Something that was so insane, it might actually work. The plan went as following. The HMS Campbelltown would be a lone World War I American warship, and inside of the hull would be a very big bomb. Now, this bomb was put together with very fragile materials that would explode with the lightest of vibrations and sparks, so you can only imagine how that felt to everyone on board the ship at the time. Especially since the plan was to take this wooden, flimsy, and light ship over a rough estuary in front of many tons of artillery and guns and searchlights and then ram it in to a massive metal wall because obviously this was a smart idea, and no one had any reservations about it. Okay men, what you are about to do is suicidal, absolutely insane, and could very well get every single one of you killed. If any of you would like to back out now, you can do so without a stain on your record as a commando. You can go, Johnson. N n not that. What's for lunch? Oh, beans on toast. Never mind. I'm out. But in all legitimacy, not a single commando did back out of the raid. The mentality was sheer suicide. To give you an idea of how outnumbered they were, this port consisted of over 40 anti-aircraft guns, 14 U-boat pens, and there were roughly 5,000 German soldiers covering the town and port of saint Nazaire. Only 611 commandos were to take part in this raid. That's a count of being outnumbered nearly 10 to 1. To make matters even worse, the RAF squadron called in to cover the raid couldn't do very much because it was cloudy and were ordered not to fire under cloudy conditions. So at this point, they were flying around making noise, making every Pfefferpotas eating German in a 20 mile radius more paranoid than Joseph Stalin executing anyone who didn't kiss his commie ass. Back on the ship, they had managed to get the HMS Campbelltown to the wall while taking heavy gunfire. 
They slammed it into the wall and swam off, getting into the compound. In fact, the captain of the ship and expert on the bomb in the hull was to be kept safe at all times. But when both skippers were consecutively shot, he overtook the ship and guided it all the way into the port. I don't know many people who would take a job where there was a clear 100% chance of being killed, especially when he saw it happen right in front of his eyes. And to give this captain even bigger steel balls than he already had, when they finally slammed the ship into the wall, the captain looked at his men through the gunfire and chaos and said, Well lads, we're only 4 minutes late. What a rock star! And when they finally got into the port, they went around killing whatever moved and blowing up whatever they could. Eventually, many were caught or shot. Eventually, some of them regrouped, and they had discovered that their only boats out of the place were sunk. The only option at this point was to get to the Spanish border through Vichy, France. Only five would ever make it to Spain, 350 miles away. And one small brigade of commandos of roughly about 80 men had decided to charge the only bridge out of the port, filled with Nazis outnumbering them completely. The lunacy of these men was unmatched. Even in the estuary, one sergeant had been shot 16 times and still did not surrender. Eventually, he was succumb from a loss of blood, but was one of five awarded with the Victoria Cross. But while only some made it out, many were forced to surrender, and upon surrendering, this happened. Captain, it was no good ramming a stout cassoon like that with a flimsy wooden ship. You English surely had to have some sort of reason for doing something so ridiculous, so preposterous, so ste- Hey Hans, here I come in. Das ist? Is- wait, is that- is that the bu- You're a dead man. The blast had caused irreparable damage to the port, and it was useless until 1947. The Tirpitz was then bound to just the Norwegian ports and fjords, and didn't sink a damned thing. Hitler had been so enraged by this, and the fact that one of his ex-best friends, Captain Byrne, was a commando in this incident, he ordered that every commando was to be treated as a spy, meaning that they were to all be killed upon capture after that. I mean, of course it wasn't because his ex-friend, Mr. Byrne, was a uh, commando, it was more so the fact that the entire port had been blown to smithereens, but in total, 228 men were able to escape on the small wooden boats back to Britain out of the port. 168 were killed, and about 215 became prisoners of war to the German army, most locked up in Kolditz. Their bravery is a fine example of military heroics, and an operation that had forever changed the course of World War II. Today, it is remembered as the greatest raid of all.